This month is dedicated to planning and organizing my smaller business. We've got inventory, we've got goal setting, we've got finances, all the businessy admin stuff that's not glamorous, but it is real. I don't think anyone's trying to hide the reality of being a business owner, but this side of it is definitely not shown as much because it's boring. But I'm the type of person that wants to be fully prepared for something before I go into it. So I actually would enjoy seeing someone explain every tiny little detail of running a business because there's things that I never even thought about. Like you don't have to think about these things unless you're doing them. Also, no matter how much Googling I do, I still have questions which means I wanna see everything. Anyway, the reason I'm on the floor here is because I'm starting the year off right with setting up a good inventory system. I've mostly worked in a made to order fashion, but I wanna start keeping more products ready to ship to cut down on my order packing time. First of all, I'm just jotting down all the numbers of everything I have for both packaging and products. I'm really just tracking my inventory through Shopify, but there are all kinds of templates online you could search up if you're looking for one. I'm also planning to set up a spreadsheet though, because I would like to start using SKUs. If you don't know, SKUs are just a set of numbers and letters you make up to help you keep track of your products. They're specifically great for tracking customer demand and for people who sell at markets. I've decided to set my SKUs by product, then design, then variations like color and size. For example, my SKU of TEE0124 would be a shirt, the tools of the trade design, color green, size extra large. After giving all of my products a SKU, I decided to print out a label of the SKU and a mini version of my stickers so that I could better organize my sticker drawers. Oh, and quick tip about counting a bunch of one thing, weigh one item, or in this case, I'm weighing five of my stickers because my scale couldn't pick up on one, then weigh the whole group of items and just do the math for a good estimate on the number of items you have in total. For me, that was 4.4 divided by 0.2 times five, which equals 110 of these stickers. Once I finished counting, I ended the night by ordering some of the supplies I was getting low on. All right, I've got a big to-do list of tiny little things that I have to do today, or at least this week. There's some more things, but that's kind of the main things that I feel like I need to get done as soon as possible. And then I can get back to making some art. But at least I've already taken care of emails today and tried to reply to as many comments as I could on my platforms. Finally decided to outsource some of my design, so I'm recording that process for a TikTok on my phone. Got my little mic. The unboxing didn't quite go as planned. Two of my designs were not right. Here I am comparing the correct with the incorrect design. So of course it's all the stickers that I needed for my wholesale order and it's messed up. So deep breaths. I'm gonna take pictures to show my supplier where they messed up and hopefully they will replace them. Well, I emailed Sticky Brand and it turns out it was me. I'm the problem. I approved the proof that looked like that. But even though it was my fault, I think they're gonna reprint them anyways, which is very kind. So shout out to them. Anyways, remember how I said I had a wholesale order? I had to sit here and make 80 stickers just now. These ones, they were printed with the white border. Obviously I can still sell them. I mean, I personally prefer them without a white border, but it's not like they're messed up. But these ones, those ones I don't know what to do with. I personally think they're pretty funky looking. I was able to get three more things done today, including fixing my printer, which just needed a printer head cleaning, and then hopefully adding the correct DMARC information to my DNS settings on my website to keep my emails from going to spam, I believe. And last thing I'm going to do tonight is take photos of my cow art print. This is the old version. For some reason, I put it as vertical. Don't know why I did that, but it finally occurred to me to put it horizontal. So I'm gonna take photos of this so I can update the listing tomorrow. The messed up sticker wholesale order fiasco wiped me out. So this is all we're doing today and that's fine. Feels like one of those days where you just wanna curl up on a couch with a good book and read. Instead of doing that, I bought a printer. I decided to upgrade my little printer that I use for my stickers and bookmarks to a pigment-based ink printer. I found out they make basically a pigment version of the printer I have now. So I put my printer on Facebook Marketplace and hopefully it'll sell quickly so I can make some of that money back. I then headed over to my computer to edit those photos I took last night of my art print. I usually start in Lightroom, especially if it's a bunch of photos, but if it needs more editing or if I'm making a mock-up, I'll use Photoshop. Once the photos were finished, I edited my listing on my website and checked that off my list. Next, I started editing the video that I shot for social media yesterday, and I did that in DaVinci Resolve because I'm trying to learn the program. We've got more sticker paper, some magnetic sheets, and then some little magnets. I got the magnets because I want to compare magnetic sheets versus little magnets versus the type of magnets that I've been using and see which one actually works best for the magnetic bookmarks that I make. Not feeling confident so far. It doesn't seem like it wants to stay together very well. Oh, there we go. Oh, the funny thing is these tiny little magnets are stronger than that big sheet of magnet. Love me. 
magnet. I've gotten a lot of the important things done, but there's one thing that I've been putting off for a month that I just have to do today. And that is finishing a painting for one of my YouTube videos. I wanna post it Sunday, so I need to finish filming it so I can edit it. So I guess it's time to set the office up for filming. Good morning. So for the past three days, I've just been editing my video. It's taken that long <laughs> and it's still not finished, but hopefully I will get it finished today and post it tomorrow morning. But today's very exciting because if you watched my last vlog, I made t-shirts and I'm going to pick them up today. It looks so good. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. Perfect day to make some art in periwinkle. Here's a tools of the trade in the moss green. Okay, so the shirts go out on Thursday, so I'll probably pack them either tomorrow or the next day. I would start doing it now, but I've got that other video that I gotta do. Apparently I have no focus today, so I figured I'd just show you what I got distracted by. I pretty much just keep everything about my life and business on Notion. I have two different to-do lists, a content calendar, my YouTube planning, my yearly goals, my quarterly goals, my meal planning, business notes, all kinds of stuff. But the thing I got distracted on right now is my quarterly goals, so I'll show you those. The older I get, the faster time seems to go by, so instead of doing monthly goals, I decided to do quarterly goals. Here you can see that I created five different tags and then also added a status for to-do or done. Then I can just click into each of these and add more details or write down, for example, here what books I've read. By the way, these are all great books if you're looking for some recommendations. But one of my goals for the whole year is to sell at an art fair or a market. And I know you have to apply pretty early for those. So what I was just doing was making a list of all the things I felt like I need, all the products that I might want there or need to make. And then I made this chart so that I could keep up with the application deadlines and when the craft fair is taking place. And yeah, this just kind of showed me that there's a quite a bit of upfront costs for that, which isn't very exciting. So we'll see if I even end up doing that this year. A little peek into my business notes. I just have these drop down tabs of a whole bunch of different categories. I try to write almost everything down from settings I use, fonts, colors, to companies to work with. It's all kind of just thrown in there. For content planning, one of my pages is for social media videos and I pretty much use the calendar feature. And then I can click into each of the video ideas and write down any kind of voiceover script type thing that I want or any notes. I also have the table set up to view it as an overview where I have a section called video bank and other ideas that I always forget about but it could be a useful idea for yourself. And I have views to organize the video ideas by platform and status. On another page is my YouTube ideas where I have a template set up so that each video idea can have a planning page, script page, checklist, and more. And of course I can view it from the calendar view as well. Last thing I'm doing today before I get to editing is just filming a reveal for these paintings. So we gotta set up some cool lights and do some cool cinematography type stuff. I'll link that video somewhere so you can go see the results. Good morning, I just printed out a list of all of the orders that I have to start packing today. I have the order number, who it's shipping to, what items they're getting, where it's going, notes that people left. This person left a note saying, I'm so excited with a heart hand emoji. I love when people leave notes. The first thing I do is highlight all the items that there's more than one of, because that's the easiest thing to overlook. And then I'm also going to highlight all my international orders. And just to help me stay extra organized, I'm gonna put a little pink mark beside all the stickers and a little green mark beside all of the prints. Okay, so the plan is to pack up all the orders that have just shirts in them first, cause that'll be the easiest. So I'm gonna do that now. Apparently my favorite one, which is the green perfect day for art, is everyone's least favorite one. This is the most popular one here. Here I am already overthinking and being a perfectionist with this. I just watched some videos from some small businesses and they all wrap their t-shirts in tissue paper, I guess, to make it look cuter. So I'm just gonna do that too, I guess. Okay, it's kind of cute. It's not bad. <laughs> Why can't I fold this piece of tissue paper? Like that? I'm gonna do it like that and I'm going to... I have these little brown stickers that were supposed to work in my thermal printer, but they don't. So I'm gonna stamp them with a thank you stamp that I have. Then I'll just take my thank you card and this uh, wash and care guide 
and slide them right here. And then everyone's also going to get one of these stickers because how convenient. And then it'll go in one of these bags. Ran out of labels. And the first t-shirt order is packed. I've packed around 20 orders and while I've gotten a lot better and quicker at it, I'm exhausted. It's past midnight, so the rest of them are future me's problem. Good morning, I got curtains and it looks so much better in here. Just like a little bit of color, so much better. I'm thinking about making a vlog about decorating this room, so if that's something you're interested in, let me know. Look, even Mitty agrees that it's much more enjoyable to be in this room now. What are your thoughts? First thing I'm doing today is actually printing some bookmarks like I talked about earlier, and then I actually have to pack up this printer because I sold it. I printed out some of my bees, the Luna Moth, and the Highland Cow bookmarks. And first I'm gonna try putting a magnetic sheet on the bees. I'm scared. Just going to laminate these real quick. I just Googled it and I am supposed to use a deep cut blade if it's over 0.5 millimeters, and it is. It's like 0.6. Um, but we're gonna try it anyways. All right, moment of truth. Yeah, it definitely did not cut all the way through. I'm just gonna use my scissors to finish cutting it out and see what it looks like. The most annoying thing about having to test products is the fact that if it goes wrong, which it probably will on the first try, I'm just left with a bunch of wasted material that I have to throw away. Not exactly a clean cut, but let's see how it folds and sticks together. I think this might be a flop. I really wanted this to work because it's a thinner magnet, which would be great for books and because it would make my life easier. But I'm just not convinced that it's a strong enough magnet. It does work for one sheet of paper, but if it was a book that had thick paper, I don't think it would work. Also, it just doesn't fold well, so I had to make a cut right here so that it could fold, which defeats the purpose of doing this because I was trying to cut down on the work. Works great on the fridge though. Look at that, holding up a piece of paper. The main reason why I'm looking for a different way to make my magnetic bookmarks is because I'm worried about the edges of them getting ruined right here. And this tiny magnet makes it much worse. But I do like that it's much thinner. Guess what? FedEx came a day early. The new printer is set up and I did some test prints. The color is just a little bit different because it is pigment ink instead of dye ink, but I actually think that it's a little more accurate to what I'm seeing on my computer screen, so I'm kind of okay with that. Now I'm just gonna do a final test with my bookmarks by laminating them on both sides, hot laminate, and see how that looks. 
I loved how sturdy these bookmarks came out because it's two sheets of laminate, but I don't think I have a good enough laminator to actually be able to pull it off. The back was already starting to peel. So I think I've decided to order prints of these and then cut them at home instead of trying to print them myself, and it should make them thick enough. Last thing I did for the day was drop my old printer off with its new owner and go for a walk. Do you want to be in my YouTube video? I don't know. <laughs> Good afternoon. I've spent all morning problem solving on my stickers and bookmarks. If you want to be a small business owner, be good at problem solving. But anyways, this month is supposed to be about organization and planning. So let me actually walk you through what I'm doing. Here's how I kind of stay on top of my finance type stuff. And no, this is not legal or financial advice. Please look into all of this yourself. First of all, I have a separate business bank account because you do not want to mix your business and personal monies. Money that I make with my business goes into that account and then I transfer it to my personal bank account for when I'm spending it on my life and bills and stuff. When I need to spend money for my business though, I have a business credit card that I use because that way it gives me cash back or points, whichever I have. I just set up auto payments so that my bank account automatically pays off that credit card every month. As far as keeping up with all of my transactions, I'm currently using Wave apps, which is a free thing, kind of like QuickBooks. Unfortunately though, Wave is about to raise their prices for the tools that I use it for, so I will be switching to zero in a few months when they do that. I really like using these accounting softwares instead of my own spreadsheet because they can automatically connect to my credit card and my bank account and record the transactions for me. It's so much easier during tax season. For receipts, if I buy anything in person, I will just snap a photo of the receipt and uh, send it to my computer in a folder. For online orders, I created a label called receipts in my email and I will just take that email confirmation and label it as a receipt so that I can find it during tax season. Two other things that I do for my business is I have an EIN so that I'm not giving my social security number out to anyone and I have a virtual mailbox so that I'm not giving my address out to anyone. And a virtual mailbox is kind of like a PO box. Last thing I'm gonna talk about is my file management. I used to store all of my information on external hard drives like this one or SSDs and I even have a big three terabyte hard drive that has a lot of my old archived files on it right now. That system was fine for a little while, but since my husband and I both use a ton of storage, he works on films and I have like my YouTube and everything like that. We actually have a NAS system, which is kind of like a giant hard drive. I have a folder called active and a folder called archive. Active is anything that I'm currently working on and archive is obviously things that I'm not working on anymore. So like when I finish a YouTube video, I move it from the active to the archive folder so that it's not cluttering up the active folder. In each of those, I start with a number for my folders so that they are organized in the way that I want them to be. So number one is art projects and that's just gonna have all of my photos, videos, uh, mock-ups, sticker files, Photoshop files, and all of that type of stuff for each of my art projects. Number two is YouTube, and I just order these by the video number, like this video is number 18. Then I also have this blank folder up here that's kind of a template that I can just copy whenever I start a new YouTube project. And just within each of these folders, I have audio, documents, exports, footage, graphics, music, project, and SFX. I also have this folder called loose footage that's kind of convenient. So anything that I film that maybe one day I want to use in a random YouTube video, it's there. Number three is my social media videos and I just organize these by the date, month, day, year, and then whenever I decide to name the video. Every quarter, few quarters, whenever it starts getting cluttered, I just move those files into the archive one and that's why there's not that many for this month. Number four is product assets and this is going to be anything that I use for like packaging, anything to help me make mock-up photos, um, some templates and so on. Number five is all my branding files. So we have like my logos, profile photos, banner photos, that type of stuff. Number six is my business files. So that's all of my like government type stuff, my EIN, resale authorization, sales tax form. Number seven is just all my photos. And then we have a folder for all my personal documents. And then lastly is video assets, which is just a whole bunch of random assets that I use in videos. All of your stuff that's stored on a hard drive or something like that needs to be backed up in a second or maybe even third place. And not just any place, it should be somewhere completely separate from this. So for example, if this is sitting in my house and my house burns down, my backup should not also be in my house. Hope this has been helpful. Let me know any questions you have in the comments. Until next time.